So why is the why is sensuality dangerous? Why is wanting pleasure dangerous? Because that's what we said. Understanding gratification, mm. delight in the prospect of pleasure, the danger becomes apparent. <coughs> So how else would you describe that danger, as in why is it dangerous? Well, so... We On the basis of oh. your presently enduring okay. situation. Okay, so let's... I want to start with gratification. Mm. So... Right now, feeling a little bit unpleasant feeling. Um, so, the possibility of getting rid of that unpleasant feeling mm. by I don't know, like figuring it out, or um, we're doing something, doing about something, it. or whatever. Yeah. So the, there's a pleasure that comes from that, but that pleasure is the pain. Mm -hmm. is what you were saying. So the pleasure, sure, is basically the possibility of that pain being taken away. Yeah. So you, the, uh, so the, the pain that you're feeling. Focusing or giving priority to the possibility of it disappearing yeah. is felt pleasantly. Mm -hmm. Would you feel any, 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 any degree of pleasure on account of possibility of pain going away if you don't feel pain in the no. first place? No. The pain is primary. The pain is first. Exactly. So then the, the extent of pleasure, the, the greatest sensual satisfaction yep. that mind fully gripped relishes the most in, in amazing utter, thing you can experience yeah is fully determined it's basically so pleasant because it's painful yeah so the the greater the prospect of escape and the greater the prospect would be to a great pain mm -hmm. uh, is then the greater pleasure but again pleasure is not at the end of that pain no it's that it is that it is while you're feeling that pleasure is because it's painful and you're feeling like you're escaping it that's it so that's it's all so it's like but if there is no pain like when the pain disappears when the itch disappears your pleasure goes flat so is it like those you know those pictures where you see either two faces or a candlestick you're basically oh yeah sure it's like magic eye yeah yeah whatever yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but like it's, it's the, it is the, it's both t a candlestick and it's two faces it's yeah, it like is, yeah. Yeah. it's just different way of looking at it you yeah. see so and you basically <coughs> the two different ways of looking at it are in the right order and in the wrong order. Yeah. In the wrong order you're prioritizing the pleasure. In the right order you're realizing actually that pleasure is fully dependent on this pain. Not just that. That pleasure is this pain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you could not there's still a, yeah, yeah. there is still a degree of separation when you say pleasure is within the pain, it's this, it's this, this. Yeah, it's, you know, you have to express it somehow. <coughs> yeah. But if you want to be really, really accurate uh, that pleasure is the pain, yeah. is also painful. So if there is no greater pain, that pleasure would be then seen as painful. It's all, it's all relative, isn't it? Did you hear that a bit? Sorry, no. If there is no, <laughs> if there is no greater pain, there's no greater pain, then this currently presented prospect of, of evading the pain, which is pleasant, yeah. that prospect of evading the pain would be also seen as ple unpleasant. But the reason why pleasure, why pain is felt as pleasure in the, when it comes to sensuality is because it's underlined by even more pain. Mm. If there is no more pain, then the, uh, the, the nature of sensuality would be apparent. It's painful. It always was painful. That's what we were saying, that like the embers, the burning embers, the fire was always painful. The only reason it's pleasant is because it's less painful than your burning itch. Yes, that's what I mean, it's relative. Well, it's not even relative. It's painful in itself. It's relative yeah. in your perception of it. That's what I mean, yeah. So you... 
Yeah, yeah. So nobody, nobody denies the, uh, that there is that you can feel pleasure, but what you are feeling pleasant is the pain. Yeah, but, but but what I want to say, like so, so you've got this feeling, and you go, oh, this is pleasant, not seeing that actually, that is that, that pleasure, pleasure there is actually painful. Is pain, yeah, yeah. Because and so see, as you just said, not seeing that, that's exactly the reason why it's felt pleasant. Yeah. So no perspective on the arisen pain, you experience pleasure. And again, it's like, isn't it? Seems to be more. It seems to be this. Uh, uh, tendency to focus and not see the wider picture. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, of course. Because yeah. you're focusing in on the more particular pleasure. Yeah. Not seeing that that's. Yeah. Fully enclosed within this pain. Well, that's why, I'll, like, that's why it's any, painful. any opportunity I have, I keep talking about. Perfect. Yeah. Mm. You have to learn to see things that are simultaneously present that you cannot focus on while you're focusing on something else. Which so is you're why focusing on this. Okay, that's fine. That is part of the experience. The other part is that which is there simultaneously present in the background that you determine by your focusing. Which is why this contemplation or contemplation like this need to always be rooted in the situation as a whole. Otherwise it becomes abstract. Yeah. And um, and you could see if, if all you do is focusing, if all you do is observation of your nostrils, if all you do is, you know, going to methods and whatnot, if all you do is look at the objects of your experience, how can you then discern the context of it that yeah. you cannot focus on? Because yeah. your focus comes from that context. So if you cannot discern that, how can you then see that underlying context of your current pleasure is pain? That's right. Yeah. So the context of the pleasure is pain. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Which means yeah, they're not painful. on the same level. <laughs> yeah. If the pain of the pleasure would be equally presented with the pleasure yeah. on the same level, yeah. it would be obvious, easy choice for everyone. Yeah. But the reason why everybody goes for pleasure is because you don't you like feel pleasure. it painful. Oh, okay. Okay. You have no context on it in it. <coughs> in regard to it. But that's also because of craving for pleasure. Which is because of pain that yeah. you're not seen. As we said, sensuality pressures you first. Mm. That's already pain, through and through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you cannot escape that situation by any form of giving in to sensuality. So the only reason you'll be craving for pleasure is because you don't know the escape of the arisen pain of sensuality. So, and that arisen. Uh, sorry, not knowing that escape of the arisen pressure, it's already your context of your experience, it's already peripheral, it's already something you cannot focus on directly. Because see, focusing works towards the objects of your senses, <coughs> but this is the basis for the whole experience mm. of sense and sense objects. Mm. That's where you're already pressured. Yeah. If all you do is focusing on the sense objects, nostrils, nostrils, visual, visual, moving, tactile, if, if that's where your mind is, at the, at the end of the sense objects, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how can you then understand the peripheral context of the whole thing mm -hmm. when you never look in that way? But how can, you, how can you focus? How can you look directly without that being? At the, at the pressure yeah. that you're experiencing on a kind of a pleasant sight. Where is that pressure to see it? Where is the pressure? You can't see it like that. The exactly. The pressure is basically you have been pressured. So how can you then know the pressure? Peripherally, through the through through those anything particular. Mm -hmm. That's the necessary basis for. What is the necessary basis? Another necessary basis for ple for pressure. For pressure. How can you Body? Know? Well, yeah, but how can you know pressure is there? Um, As in, you know, because your pressure you to feeling. act. Because of how you feel. Exactly. Can you directly uh, observe with your senses your feelings? Your feelings, no. There you go. Yeah. So, the whole domain of true feelings, what it's meant by feelings, yeah, 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 pleasure, yeah. Um, displeasure neutral, is completely invisible to those who refuse to give up the focusing methods. Yes. It's completely invisible. Because all you do is look at things, no. and you can't look at your feelings. feelings you can feel like your feelings. feelings. Basically, it's like the the the, the mood, the hue, the kind of tone that everything is kind of 
already affected by. Mm. It's not something that you can. It's like the weather. Yeah. You can't look at the weather. It's just like. Yeah, yeah. But even even more so um, than the weather. It's just entirely dom different domain From where observation cannot apply. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. My teaching is for the one who knows how to feel. Yeah. You need to learn how to feel. Because mm. most people, yeah, would just bundle up what they feel with what they observe and project it all out there, and that's it. Negated in doing so. So people see gratification. People experience happiness at the prospect of of pleasure, of the senses, which is you know not necessarily just a course. Uh, sexual pleasure or, or music or food Sen sensual pleasure sensuality is on the domain of anything that causes you joy or, or sadness if you lose it on account of sense perception mm -hmm. so I don't know somebody chopping up the favorite tree in front of a kuti and that now exposes the, the view to the road uh, you get upset on account of that you're upset on account of sensuality mm. Yeah. I'm I'm wanting visitors to turn up. I wanna to talk to you. You get upset. That's an account of sensuality. Mm -hmm. Wanted visitors don't turn up. You get upset. It's an account of sensuality. Mm. It's an account of the experience of the senses. Yeah. So that's how deep it goes. It's not just saying no to particular pleasures. Obviously you need to first say no to particular pleasures of unwholesome nature. But in order to uproot it, if you uproot it, you'll be uprooting your whole domain. So people turn to this happiness and gratification because uh, the, pressure, the pressure is too unpleasant. The mind is untrained in regard to the pressure. And has no other conceivable means of escape from that painful pressure than giving. So I want to, want to ask them, so then what's the escape? But then we'll get to this case. Exactly, we're not, we're not there yet. No, well, we? <laughs> I want to ask you, uh, why then, if you were to free yourself or see the extent of the gratification, see that no amount of pleasure uh, you, you might derive, you have derived, you yeah. are deriving, yeah. it's actually painful. Yeah. That pleasure, while, it, while it's pleasant, it's actually painful. Yeah. Uh, why then, if somebody is to free themselves from that, they would also free themselves from aversion and ill will? As the Sutta say. Yeah, because it's all about trying to, it's all about mastering the assumption of being able to master the feelings. So there's a, if somebody does something, you become angry, and so you develop thoughts of, you have thoughts of ill will towards that person. To help you deal with the anger, it's a kind of a response to an arisen unpleasant feeling. Mm. So, um, so you, you derive some pleasure. So, in that way, is it the same as a central response in regard to the en 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 enticing prospect of engaging with sense objects for the sake of pleasure? seems to be like the same principle. It is. So it's completely the same principle. Yeah. You and not just that, it's probably about 80, maybe even 85 percent entirely the same motion. The only thing that varies is, is the object. The, yeah, exactly. Whether object is for you or as in, um, in favor of you or against you. Yeah, that's yeah, it. yeah. So but usually that's how it starts. That's the first point, oh, this is completely against me or completely for me. Yeah. But that's actually the last bit of it. The whole, the whole structure of you resisting the, the uh, presently enduring feeling yeah. that pressures yeah. you yeah. is the, the whole structure of you craving for the prospect that basically in its possibility offers you, oh, maybe I can escape this, or maybe I can reduce this, yeah. or maybe I can replace this. Yeah, yeah. That's entirely the same. Sensuality and ill will entirely the same. 
that's why often anger mixes up with sensuality. Yeah. Especially with people's sexuality and yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> like or like sadness and other emotions mixed with like comfort eating and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Pleasant music. Mm -hmm. You know, when people say, oh, music, I find it helps to deal with my pain. Mm -hmm. It's the same saying like eating cakes helps me deal with my pain. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. Because as the Buddha said, Patujana knows only um, distraction of sensual gratification as, as the only means as the only mean of, of there is pain. To, man to, to manage it. this pain. And the pain either comes from yeah. the pain yeah. is either basically so so one feels pain and is feels a pull towards sense 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 sensual objects you know like or um, one experiences pain in response to I don't know somebody does something that's displeasing to you. Mm. It's basically a move to overcome that. You're again pulled towards the sense object, yeah. which is that person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or rather pressured. And you're, you're focused. So you're focused, yes. Rather than recognising that actually I've already been pressured by this. I've already been subjected to this. Well, there's this feeling enduring. Mm. And... That came unbidden. That it, it, and the possibility of me having any mastery over that is well, it's already quite obviously yeah. false. Yeah. Yet here you are acting out of the possibility yeah. of mastering the circumstances that upset me in the first place. But if I could truly master them, if I am the master, I wouldn't have been upset in the first place, or I wouldn't have been provoked sensually in the first place. But I wouldn't have been provoked aggressively in terms of ill will in the first place. So why then? Why would then people still give in? Because they you kind of know on one level. Yeah, but you don't haven't seen that anything that you can possibly experience. has simply enjoyed on its own. It has the nature to arise. Why haven't you seen that? Well, that's a beginningless. Because because it is ignorance. Yeah, but why is ignorance still there? Ignorance is beginningless, but ignorance yeah. remaining there yeah, 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 yeah. is, you know, it's not that you can't do anything about it. So why, is, why okay, is there so nothing done about it? Again, don't leave the basis of feeling that we're talking about. The answer's there. Because of being still being pulled, this, this sure, yep, exactly. Because, yeah. So why are you pulled? Because why are you pressured by the feeling? Or rather, how do you measure that you are pressured or pulled by the feeling? By the unpleasantness. Uh, Is that what you mean? Well, sort of, but even more accurately, how do you know that feeling pressured you? Or how can feeling pressure you? Because you're bothered by it. Yeah, because you act out of it. Yeah. If you don't act out of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not pressuring. Yeah, yeah, Pressure's yeah. there, but you are not being pressured. Yeah, yeah. So your weakness yeah, yeah, yeah. is then measured by the act of weakness yeah. for which you're responsible. And why then would people give in? So there is the endu enduring feeling. Because they can't resist that feeling, they can't withstand that they feeling. They can't endure it. They can't endure exactly. it. Yeah, yeah. So literally, if we boil down everything we've been saying yeah. in the last few talks regarding this, this topic, it all comes down to not knowing how to allow the reason feeling to, to endure, endure on its own. On its own. Because that is its nature. Yeah. And so whenever you do anything to withstand that enduring feeling, yeah. you're, you're, you're simply... Affected. Kind affirming of going it. against, the affirm, yes, affirming you're, you're, the pressure, yeah, yeah. And, and and not allowing the nature of these these yeah. feelings to yeah. manifest. And itself. if you ask yourself, why am I not allowing this? There's no answer. It's a completely gratuitous assumption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not allowing it because I never thought about it. Really. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not allowing it because I'm keep ignoring the issue yeah. of allowing it. Mm. Hence, ignorance is the most fundamental attitude. 
it keeps us bound. But you can't just can you just well can you just choose? Okay, right. So from now on, I'm going to allow any feeling to endure. No, because see, you've done that now. Yeah. <laughs> On account of you want to get rid of the feelings. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You can't escape it so easily. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can't make a method out so of it. Can't. So all you can do because it's always going to be secondary. So all all you can do is with a. No, there is a feeling that's that you. That's what I want to start with. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what all I teach yeah. is. Suffering and freedom from it. Yeah, All yeah, I yeah. teach is what people feel and freedom from it. My teaching is for the one who knows knows what he knows how to feel, not in a wishy-washy snow snowflake like sense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I feel like this. No, yeah, yeah, he yeah. knows how to feel. As yeah, yeah, he yeah. knows how, how to, to not let the feelings be the feelings. Exactly. How not to <laughs> interfere yeah. with your reason feeling, and he knows how to uh, endure the endurance of feeling. So being mindful of the feeling that's enduring and I want to say developing this context of I've been subjected to this mm. so that whenever you're seeing but you don't need to be specifically developing that context if that context presents itself that's fine on the basis of you allowing feeling to endure for as long as it wants to endure and allowing it to change on a more particular level while remaining the same in its fundamental nature uh, that might reveal you that context but not necessarily mm -hmm. so you don't need to go look for it because you already have the necessary context which is converging point of feeling that you're allowing to endure mm -hmm. So you you allow you you allow the feelings to endure where, by understanding. Do you have no saying that? That you have no saying them, yeah. That you can't do anything to affect it. Mm. That's why you know, as we described so many times, suffering is in you craving. In regard yes. regarding how you feel, yeah. not in how you're feeling, yeah. and that is that is pretty much the necessary basis for any context or contemplation you want to develop if you want to do it rightly. The point of in presently enduring feeling. But okay, so but we have the experience of you know what falls into the idea that we do have some mastery over our feelings because oh really that's how we don't fall into it but Who basically you keep you <laughs> um basically every patujana thinks that they have some mastery over assumes that they have some mastery over their feelings well, you don't they don't really i think i remember even 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 like way way before early in suttas and even thinking about these things you kind of everybody knows oh you can't control how you feel yeah 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 okay okay but so you already know you're fully subjected to how you feel <coughs> and then you just pray that the circumstances won't make you feel too bad but the thing is that people do things in order to change their feelings yeah that's what I mean so uh, that's what they because they think they can do that they wouldn't do it otherwise oh yeah sure sure that's but what I mean so like you go oh, I'll, like you said I'm depressed I'll eat a nice cake because that'll make me feel good. Because I can somehow right, manage right, my right, feelings. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, no. And you, you have the cake, and it does taste nice. You have a pleasant feeling. That's what I was aiming at. So it, I, 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 it worked. Yeah. I can control my feelings. No, even that the whole the whole act of trying to do that, it's because of sadness. It's because of pain. Yeah. So that is your motivation. Yeah. So throughout doing this act, you are carrying on the motivation that you're trying to escape yeah, from. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know that it doesn't work. But what you don't know is that you don't even have a say in terms of control when it comes to your environment the appropriation of the senses mm -hmm. and sense objects mm -hmm. that's where it takes place 
Mm. Now you know you're just subjected to feelings, but you don't know that you have no right in claiming that these eyes, ears, nose, smell, taste, touch, that are, are yours either. Yet that's what everybody claims it is mine. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think I can indirectly protect my feelings, control my feelings. I know I, I have absolutely no say in them arising or ceasing if they want to go, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I th I'm fully committed to fighting for the environment yeah. that will prevent me from feeling such yeah. and such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I mean. They know you so can't you control of, the feelings. Yeah. There is no direct relationship with your feelings. It's an indirect managing the... And that's the key of ignorance yeah, and undoing yeah, yeah. the ignorance. So that could, like, what you already know, which is that there is no direct relationship with my feeling, I'm subjected to it. Yeah. Stop ignoring it and stop trying to escape by the means of perception yeah. from that necessary basis, even for such attempts of such escape. Mm. So why are why is sensuality dangerous? Why is sensuality dangerous? That's what we that wasn't that where we were. Wasn't that your question earlier? Maybe. Uh, why is the gratification dangerous? Yes, that's what you asked. Mm. Why is the gratification dangerous? Yeah. Because the, the whole thing is, is in sensuality. Yeah, yeah. Gratification, danger, and escape, it's off the central domain. Yeah. But why is the act of regarding pain is pleasant? The dangerous. Act, the act of regarding pain is pleasure. Yeah. Or yeah. the act of feeling pain as pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in acting out of it. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not your act to, to feel it like this, it's your mistake. Yes. But why is acting out of that? Dangerous. Yeah, so you have a uh, sensually enchanting object, prospect of it nearby. You can access it if you want. So that experience as a whole, that, that feeling, underlying feeling of that prospect that you are now in, is unpleasant. Because the pleasure that's wanted is not here. And why you want that pleasure is not because the thing is pleasant, but because the arising of the prospect is painful. Mm. That determines how much you want pleasure. Because as we described in other talks, if the pleasure were truly contained in the objects, you wouldn't be able to know it before you're in touch with the objects. Mm -hmm. And you certainly yeah, would you not be able to not feel pleasure when you're in touch with the objects, which also happens. The, the pleasure arises with the prospect of having that thing. Yes, yes because the prospect of having the thing is painful. Mm. So, following that... I've not got it, and I want it. Following that prospect... Why is that dangerous? Because you're reinforcing this wrong direction. Why is the wrong why is the wrong direction wrong? Because uh, because you aren't seeing what's painful as painful. You aren't seeing Why is that risky? Danger, risk. It says you know, unknowing gratification, the danger became apparent, the risk became apparent, as the Sutta say. So why is it risky? Because... Because actually you have no control over the arising of pleasure. What pleasure? This pain. <laughs> <laughs> this pleasure that you... this... 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 Um, this possibility of the diminishing of the pain uh -huh. may not you, you, you can't do, make that happen no matter what you do so well no it is a gratification though it does gratify to some extent uh -huh. the burning embers do help leper with his uh, skin disease uh -huh. so there's no risk there then if that would be the sole criteria, because there is a degree of gratification, so that can't be the risk. So what is then? What is the risk in that gratification that you can get? Because yet, yeah, from the point of view of, of of pain that just pressured me, less pain yeah, is, is a form is, of escape. Is pleasure. 
Exactly. It's more, it's more agreeable. It's mm -hmm. more desirable because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's pleasant. But giving in to that Your contains an inherent danger, a risk. Well, I, I want to say, is the risk? Well, I want to say because it's, it's going to keep reinforcing, it's going to reinforce this particular direction. Oh yes, that, that's, that happens as a result of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's not the apparent risk. Like, oh, this result will happen after I do this. No, there is a risk in it, imply risk before you do it. That's what risk is. That's what means something's risky. Oh, this is risky. Knowing risk, you don't need to wait for the outcome to see the risk. Then you don't know the risk before you do it. So directly, before you do it, at the prospect of doing it, you discern that there is a risk in doing it. Okay. So What's the, the risky bit? So the Buddha says it's that these things are impermanent, unownable, subject to change. Which things? Feelings? No. Um, Yes. Let's say on the level of feeling. Okay. Because <laughs> that's that again, if you don't feel unpleasant when the prospect of desirable desirable object comes your way, you, you wouldn't be pressured to act towards it. Yeah, yeah. So let's not leave that necessary basis out. So go on. It's impermanent, so, unownable. So this um, possibility of pleasure, the, the diminishing of, but the, okay, which is seen as painful. Mm -hmm. Is completely out of my hands, and could change at any minute. Which one? What can change? The the pleasure, the pain. But what if you change the way you want it to change? And you get your desires gratified? Yeah, that could happen. Or it could why go is that, the other way. Why is that risky? Because it could go the other way. Exactly. Because it's always a gamble. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now, but you know, it's so a 50 50 gamble, so you have a good chance of winning. Yeah, but how? So, so. So actually, so so because you're not in any control over the feelings that arise, I'm reaching out for some pleasure, and it could end up in more pain. Yeah, sure. That's always a risk of any project in the world. But again, that's not a fundamental risk. They would make you not go that way at all. Because mm. as I said, from that point of view, it's fifty-fifty. Yeah. But when the Buddha says the danger becomes apparent, means you cannot go back to sensuality ever again. And then he gives a simile like a stone broken in half that cannot be joined together. Okay. Like a vomited food that cannot be desirable. Like a dried up leaf that cannot become green again. And that'll be because you now see that whether the what arises deeper. is pef yeah, whatever is whatever f feeling arises, whether it's painful or pleasant that's something that you were subjected to and that in itself is unpleasant yes that's on the level of you being pressured by the arisen prospect of sensuality or something like that but even being even being but hit by pleasure is something that you were hit by yeah that's what i'm saying yeah okay, hit okay. by the by the prospect, prospect of sensuality of okay, which okay, is regarded okay. as pleasant yeah yeah so that's absolutely true <coughs> so these things that kind of change in a way of like oh look now I have opportunity for this great desire for gratification of it um, that's on the, oh, that's on the like that the fundamental that still endures so you're affected by that and while you're affected by that desire that's the only way you'll be acting to fulfill the desire mm. if the desire were not unpleasant in its nature you wouldn't be pressured to do anything and pressuring to do anything or, or following the pressure to do anything is where gratification is. And the Buddha said, when you understand that, you understand the danger. The danger becomes apparent. The danger of your act, not of what you are subjected to. The danger of responding to the fact that you are pressured. Yes. Why is it dangerous to do that? Because the fact that you are pressured by, say, let's stick to the example, uh, a central object it offers itself you can have it it's unpleasant so you have it to get pleasure from it and escape from the displeasure of it 
that's in itself you have no say in that, you're subjected to that but it's the act of gratification, it's the act of seeking that pleasure mm -hmm. in order to escape pain that reveals the danger, that's the danger in it doing, doing it, makes it dangerous which means in itself these things arising on their own is just how they are it's your way of involving yourself with them mm -hmm. that reveals the danger. It's your oh, way of like the danger your way becomes of going apparent. For, going for the yeah, following the gratification. the gratification. Okay. Why is that dangerous? Do you need help? I do. So, being pressured by the central object that's in front of you, mm. that you can have now, that's the reason state of affairs. That's the reason experience as a whole. Mm -hmm. the, the, the unpleasant feeling of not having this, mm. the mind grip wanting it. The, thing as a whole has a reason as such. Yeah. You having a desire to out of that. Acting out of it. Yeah. You're then responding to something which has arisen which I had no Yeah, but see that's again now you're explaining it linearly. Okay. Uh, the point is, can you act towards it without implying that you want that same thing that you're acting towards to change? As in your experience as a whole. Would you be acting out of being pressured by the desire, could you be acting out of the being pressured by the desire without implying I want to change I this? I want this to change. I, I don't want, want this to be. I don't want this situation to be like that. I want it to be like that. So even if if there is a like if you don't practice restraint, if you're unrestrained householder layman yeah. who lives like just follows his central pleasures, yeah. say a new object of sensuality appears, yeah. and he knows he'll have it. He is going for it in a second the experience of his desire that has been manifested when he became aware of the object is unpleasant because it's not pleasant enough yeah from his point of view this situation i'm in now is not pleasant enough it could be more pleasant if i go if i get that yeah it's just it's just so basically whichever way you take it fundamentally you're avoiding pain because you want because you want something yeah, to change you less want pain. Cha even if you don't if you know you can't change it doesn't mean you you still want change. Yeah. That's the risk. Wanting change. And can you engage? Can you give in? Can you act out of your desire without implying you want change? No. Either change of this pleasure either change of this pleasure for more pleasure, yeah. or change of this pain for less pain, yeah. or change of this pleasure with com this pain for complete pleasure. That's all change. Yet it's the change that made you pressure, that pressured you in the first place. The change pressured me in the first place. Yeah. Because what else is arising of desire than change of circumstances that you were pressured by? So you mean something? You mean something changed? So I mean, like there was no central object yeah, exactly. here, and now there is. Okay. It changed. So yeah. Okay. So so something changed. Yeah. On account of which I now find that there's this possibility of pleasure. Can that possibility of pleasure be acted out of without, without approving and positive. implicitly yeah. wanting more change? No. no. Yet the change is the only reason you were pressured in the first place. Yes. Yet your only means of escaping change is it's to approve change. the change which makes you more liable to pressure of change. Yeah, yeah. So for a leper with a skin disease, fire cauterizing his wound is is the only means of escape that he knows that it's making his wounds even worse that he needs to cauterize even more that will make the wounds even worse that he needs to cauterize more so the danger of gratification of following the desire is the implicit approval implicit appropriation implicit basic implicit wanting mm. of change mm. 
yet it's because of the change that you have this desire that bothers you in the first place. So you make yourself liable to the risk by doing it. It's not See, the things have changed, things change on their own, that's fine, but as I said, how you know you're pressured by feelings? Because you give in. If you're not giving, if you stop giving in to the pressure of feelings, you can't say anymore, feelings pressure me. So the yeah. measure of how much you're pressured is the measure of how much you acted yeah. out of feelings. Even mentally. Even mentally, exactly. Um, so can you say that the, the danger is the change? Uh, well, the, 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 the danger, danger is, is change. Is like they're basically well no again you could like if you just see change in things that's not the danger that you need that you you won't see this dangerous you need to see that your giving in your approval your welcoming delighting in being happy on account of the prospect of satisfying desire cannot be done without mm -hmm. implying change without implying. so cannot be done without making yourself subjected to the risk of change which is the greatest risk life changes for death so why gain so changes okay, so for loss. So why is change dangerous? Yeah, so you can ask that question yeah. now. Yeah. So it's the gratification reveals the danger because there is no gratification without implicit change. Thus change is dangerous. Why is change why dangerous? Is change dangerous. Because think the idea so because change is not this continuous things continuously just change it's like no yeah like, okay it's not mean, go on. yeah it's go it on. basically it's something change is completely like comes from a completely conceivable co direction I, I find that things have already changed I can't like, it's something that's totally beyond my power me abrupt yeah it happens to you yeah just as we describe in terms of feelings, like yeah. even people who know, people who are not relinquishing sensuality, practicing the Dhamma, they still know you can't control feelings. You're subjected to them. So, yeah. And so you can't. So you can't. So you can't look at something change. Rather, you just go, "Well, that's that's change." Yeah. yeah the it's change changed. we talk about is not the change of my observation, which yes. is fully on like what I want to do, or some like metaphysical theory. The change is the change of how you feel, and you have no say in that. Okay. Because as I said, you can only understand gratification if you understand the pressure. You can only understand the danger if you understood gratification. That means understanding of the pressure. What's the pressure other than feeling? Hence, if you still think, if a person still thinks on the level of, oh, this is one thing, one thing changes, second thing, second thing, that has nothing to do nothing with what we are talking with, about. Yeah, yeah. That's just the domain of science and physics, yeah, yeah, yeah. which doesn't have the observer that is self-aware. <laughs> Can you account for feelings in physics and mathematics? Yeah, there you go. You cannot account for the Dhamma. Full stop. You so, yeah, so basically... So change is change on the emotional level. And yeah. that's exactly what he would have said when he asked people, oh, so what, your, pleasure, your, your, your self is, is, is your pleasure? He says, yes. Oh, so why, don't you, why, why, why are you then feeling pain sometimes? Yeah. Why are you sometimes feeling neutral? Because if your feeling is yours, as in if you would be in control, it wouldn't change. Yeah. It would always be the way you want it to be. So you are su subject to change. Yeah. Fundamentally. At the level of feeling. The direction, yeah. The direction where change comes from, as you said, is completely inconceivable to you. And that's why it's risky. Because if something, if you have absolutely no idea how can this change, and whether it's going to change in an agreeable way or non-agreeable way, and what extent of the non-agreeable way, and what harm of the non-agreeable way. Um, if all those things you cannot even account for in theory, yeah. um, would you regard that thing as non-risk-free? Not at all. It That's would be the extremely risky. That's the danger. That is the danger. So seeing change over there, you don't see the danger. You need to see the right order of things for danger to become apparent, as the Buddha said. And the right order is first you need to understand the gratification of it. And to understand the gratification of it, you have to first of all see Learn how to feel the fact that you've been pressured. Yeah. Allow the feeling, the pressures you so told you, stop trying to get rid of it. Through explaining it, 
through following a meditation technique, through trying to, to sort of deny it, to try to say, oh, well, look, this body is made of atoms and sensations, nothing is real, all form of management of that which pressures you. And the only reason you're doing it is because you're still pressured. So, so you've been pressured, there's a feeling, there's gratification. Gratification already starts at the prospect of changing the feeling that you don't want. That's right. Changing pleasure for more pleasure, changing pain for less pain. Changing neutral for basically distraction. Not being aware of it, because it's unpleasant when you're aware of it. So, it's inconceivable to give in to desire without wanting, wanting implying change. that change. Yet, it's that change, they have no saying, that puts you in this position in the first place. Hence, you keep yourself bound within willingly that same cycle of bound in that absolutely uh, like a, not even a cycle, like a just a perpetual domain of perpetual risk. Yeah, chaos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what's the then the, like the, the the easiest way to deal with it? Ignore it. And that's the basically I'm just Ignore the, whole the, thing. The, the the yeah the the being prey to suffering. Yeah, that's that's the definition of it. Yeah. Being subject to suffering, being prey to suffering. Being sub that's what At being subject angle, to suffering place that's what being subject to suffering means. Yeah. Means I, I don't necessarily need to be suffering, I am subject to suffering. Yeah. In the nature, in my own nature, I can be affected by suffering. And the only way to stop that is to see the danger involved in Wanting things to change, to be otherwise than they are. Yeah. Can you want things to change without craving? No. That's there what craving go. is. Hence, craving is the root of suffering. Mm. No craving, no suffering. Even amidst the adverse circumstances, they would otherwise make you suffer. So that's when the danger becomes apparent. Not the danger of this, the danger of that. The danger of me, if I want this, that's how I already make myself liable to that danger. So restraining yourself in regard to sensuality prevents some danger, but if you still want it in your mind, yeah, yeah. to that extent you're still liable to suffer. Yeah. When things change the way you don't want them to. Mm. As in, when your feelings change the way you don't want them to. Mm. So Which then you realize that even your sense of control towards perceptions, intentions and so on, it's completely secondary to the fundamental liability to the feeling hmm. that you have no say in. Yeah. That Thus, is, then that your is, control is not really subject your subject to change. Yeah. Your control then is not really your control. That's the inherent nature of feelings. They are subject to change. They are of the nature to change. Yeah. Nature to be otherwise. Be parinama dhamma. But again, that's not what the danger is. The danger isn't. The, the fact that the these things have a nature change. No, the, the, the danger is the um, is wanting them to change. Is 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 uh, is approving. Okay. The danger is approving of change through implicitly approving ah, of change okay, through giving okay. it to your desire. Okay. So See, you know, change is a problem because it bothers you. You want to get rid of it. Yet the only means of getting rid of it is approving the means of change. Which is hence the utter discrepancy and contradiction <laughs> on a very existential <laughs> level. Hence the suffering, the liability to it. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's not dangerous that things change. Yes. It's dangerous you to use means of change to change things. Yes. <laughs> that's where the danger is. Because you insert yourself and that's why you become subject to these things. Try to change. Change. Yeah. So I don't want change. And thus I'll change I'll change that. it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's the n inherent condensed that's principle of sensuality basically. And ill will. Yeah. I don't want this change, so, so I'll change, change it. Change it. Yeah. Because I don't know anything other than change. So the this change is not the risk. Outcome of me changing it is not the risk. Or it's all secondary to the risk. The risk is the fact that I still approve of that option, <laughs> so to speak. That's where the danger is. Yeah. And so you're keeping it alive. Keep yeah. yourself bound to it fully. Yeah. Keep yourself fully subjected yeah. to it. Like yeah, your yeah, your yeah, your yeah, wounds yeah. won't heal because you keep burning them. So that them. which leads to the question then: So what is the escape? Why well, do you think it's escape based on this? Uh, 
allowing whatever feeling it is to endure. So gratification understood reveals the danger, thus the escape is then understood. Which is to not make, to not want to change the arisen feeling, the enduring feeling. <laughs> yeah, but you can't quite choose to not want no, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How can you then not want it? How can you then escape it? If you can't just make a choice, okay, I don't want this. Or you, by understanding that, that... Yeah, what does that entail? Understanding the nature of feeling is that it's... It's not something I can change. Yeah, but it needs to be more accurate. More pinpoint. So, as we established then, so we said wanting change yeah. is the implicit so, risk. So Approving this, of change through your changed, wanting. This is changed and I want... My situation has changed and I want that to change. That's the danger. That's the contradiction yeah. so involved in this. What are you escaping from? The currently enduring feeling. No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, so what? What does the word escape mean? Okay. No, I know what the escape means. Yeah. But what is it escape from? Suffering. What suffering? The suffering on account of the enduring feeling. The craving. Right. Well, is the craving the enduring feeling? No, no, no. No, it's your response to the enduring feeling. So that's where suffering is. Yeah. Not on the level of enduring feeling. Yeah. So then, why you need to allow the enduring feeling to be in order to escape it? It's the allow. It's the allowing the not fighting the not. But what if you allow it for the purpose of? Then you're, it? Then you okay. Then then you're still bound up with that's. Crazy. Then you're not basically doing that's it on crazy. the right level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you're craving it. That's what needs to be drilled and drilled and drilled. But then escape. It's escape of suffering. Escape from the risk. Yeah. Escape. Escape from that danger. Escape from the danger, yeah. So how do you escape mm. wanting to change? So, hold on, let me phrase it like this then. Mm -hmm. How do you then escape the danger that is solely, fully, always, completely implicit only when you choose to act this way? As I said, there is no danger in change of random things. There's danger when you imply change for the sake of change that you are subjected to. So your implication, your craving, your wanting to change things, that's where danger is. Yeah. Not in the things. It's in Not your, in the things. Yeah. It's yeah. in your it's response. In your attitude. Yeah. So how do you, how do you, like, okay, let me put like, like this. Can you want, can you have a desire? Can you act towards sense object that's unpleasantly pressuring you? Yeah. Without wanting it. No. Can you want it? without regarding it as pleasurable. No. So, if you then don't regard it as pleasurable, how can you regard it? Not or, wanted. Or how can you regard it as unpleasurable? Let's put it like that. By seeing the danger in it. Exactly. So by seeing the danger in it... You turn away from it. You stop finding you it pleasant. You see that thing as unpleasant. You find it unpleasurable. Do you want this pleasure? No. Can you want this pleasure? No. So that's the escape. There's no, th There's no step no you need step, to do. Yeah, the danger is the escape. Just have to clarify the gratification which will reveal the danger which will make the escape possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same in Four Noble Truths, by the way. It's not like one, two, three, one, four. Two, three, four. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one within the other, just different aspects of the same thing. So that's the escape of not wanting that which you used to want. It's seeing sense. Without sense, sense, sense desires, the things that you that you want, that you that you that you saw as a as a possibility for pleasure. Have to be careful there, not objects of your senses, because now people will go okay, around yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah, "Oh, yeah, that's right, danger." Right. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah, yeah. you staring at it in the first place. If you regard so first, what, that's what you regard is. what you regarded as a possibility for pleasure, you now see as the as it says in the suttas, the um, charcoal pit. You see that thing is no longer seen as desirable, as enticing. It's now seen as well. Even dangerous. more, even more accurately, it's the same charcoal pit you used to use to burn your 
okay. your wounds. So it's your attitude towards it. That you were deriving pleasure from. It's the same charcoal pit that's now extremely painful because your wounds have healed. Hmm. And actually in that same sort of Buddha says that. Yes. What if that man that's now healed gets grabbed by the yeah, two yeah, stronger men yeah, and you want to take him back to the fire and drop, drop him in? He'll be everywhere, kicking yeah. and screaming. Yeah. So it's not like to go around, oh, so sense objects are painful. No, that's already, yeah. you already missed, yeah, yeah, yeah. missed the right basis of seeing that. Yeah, yeah. What is painful is you already engaging with sense objects. Whether you approve or disapprove of them, doesn't matter. That's why I was explaining, like most people do the asuba quite wrongly. They try to use asuba perception to replace mm. the perception of attraction. Mm. You discern asuba within it. Mm. And sure, corpses, dead bodies, things like that, can show you that sign. Sign is always peripheral to what you're looking at. Mm. That's the definition of a sign, by the way, even in colloquial terms. Mm. Don't walk on grass. You're staring at the board. You're not staring at the command of people not walking on the grass. That's implicit in the letters on the board. That's the object of your perception. The sign is in your mind. So that's what I mean. When there is the pull toward sense object or aversion toward sense object, you need to discern what the, what the sign, the context of it. And you realize that whether I approve or disapprove of it, I don't question the fact that I want to like, get rid of the pressure that it exerts over me. So I don't question the fact that I imply desirable change, mm -hmm. yet it's because of change that I suffer in the first place. Mm -hmm. So that's where the danger is. Hence the sense restraint and virtue and sila must, it's absolutely not negotiable, must be thoroughly developed beforehand because there's a slightest leak down the direction of physical action and verbal action and so on you're not going to see it on the right level of the right sign or the right context So the danger for somebody who starts from the point of view of ignorance, the danger is on the level of engagement. Positive or negative, doesn't matter. I want this, I don't want this, doesn't matter. You're already focused on this. Yeah. Why would you be focused on this unless you're already pressured by it? Yeah. Either for wanting more or not wanting it at all. Or Hence, denying it or stop, fighting it. Stop or, yeah. your focusing. Stop staring and trying to find the answer through like a revelation of your perception. Mm -hmm. And look back. At the fact that you've already been pressured. Not directly. If you look no, back, no, yeah, you'll yeah, be yeah, staring yeah, at yeah, that. No, I mean, just, just like... Whatever you looked at, that's fine. Discern the context of it while you're looking at it. Yeah. As in, when there is the experience of pressure, I'm pressured by somebody said something upsetting, or I'm pressured by somebody revealed a prospect to central, central pleasure. Either way, there's that pressure on me. So, the experience of prospect to central pleasure, I'm pressured by it. Mm. That sensual object, that, that is possibility, couldn't be there without this pressure. Exactly. So now I need to, what I need to do is not go in automatically, habitually, physically, and just get yeah. in touch with that object. Yeah. So but once I restrain, still, I still want it on the level of the mind. Yeah. And, and now you can start doing the work we talk about on the level of your mind, which is where sensuality is. Mm. And what you do on the level of the mind is, so you are pressured. There cannot be any... E conceivable form of engagement without the implicit desire to get rid of the painful pressure. It's just inconceivable. No matter of pleasure, nothing, no, no, no end game, no result there over there later on in time can be anywhere else rooted except in me not wanting this pressure. Because mm. again, if you were not pressured in the first place, could you conceive any desire towards the outcome? Mm. Inconceivable. So that when you realize when you start realizing that, then you see that there is absolutely no such thing as the end gratification that will replace the pressure. The sole pleasure of gratification is because of the presently enduring pain, and it endures throughout that time. The pain of being pressured. Yeah, that's not on you, but now you're clearly acting, having desire, not restraining desire, not understanding desire, that's on you. And that's why the risk is on you. That's where the risk is. 
can you then want anything even if you're not acting out of if you know that what you want is actually extremely extremely dangerous and deadly and there is absolutely no basis for pleasure and safety in it not at all not at all the danger becomes apparent then and now that you don't want it that's how you escape it because mm -hmm. that was the only connection by the way these things cannot enter you <laughs> you are the one who enters them yeah, yeah, yeah. that's again the Buddha said that many times but in a particular sutta it's because people take that which doesn't belong to them the Mara does what he wants controls mm -hmm. them they make themselves subject to his control yeah. what are the things that belong to Mara not to people and people take them sight the body. sound the eye. well the eye yeah, the, the, yeah. the eye objects uh, ear, the, yeah. so basically the sixth sense base mm -hmm. and everything else you can get from it yeah. within it corresponding to it the eye is mine so the, the eye is not yours the nose the, the entire body the entire experience the whole cannot be yours can you regard it as yours if you don't want it? No. Yeah. Can you regard it as yours if it's seen as painful? No. Can you regard it as yours if, if it's seen as constantly oppressing you? Not at all. Exactly. So not seeing it in such and such, in all these manners, that's why you regard it as yeah. yours. Yeah. You start seeing it, you can't regard it as yours. Mm. That's why you don't need to then choose the escape. The escape yeah. is automatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understanding Anicca correctly, understanding Dukkha correctly, Anatta is automatic. Mm. It's the necessary result of it. It's not, oh, now I do the Anatta, now I do the Anatta. 